Hey, what's going on everybody? Physio Trader here and I wanted to give you just a little bit of a brief market update. Not so much on the stock market, although I will touch base on that in just a second, but I wanted to just do a quick summary recap of uh, really what is going on in the market on a macroeconomic perspective and really where I think things are headed. And um, to be very upfront, I don't think we're headed into the soft landing they think we are or suggesting we are. Um, and I'll get to that in, in a second. So today I'm going to talk about the Federal Reserve, the quantitative tightening that they're proposed to start doing uh, tomorrow, as well as, you know, my predictions on kind of where things are going. So um, first and real quick, let's just take a quick gander at the at the market. So I've got Charles Schwab Street Smart Edge. All of this was all green this morning. All of this was real green. Uh, a little bit of China companies right now. The SQs, of course, is up, which means the TQs are down. Um, Spies down. NEO. Um, it was this Bank of America? Um, so, you know, Chinese companies are up because China is proposed, potentially, not even confirmed, but potentially going to be opening up and reducing its COVID lockdown. I call baloney. Uh, but China at the same time is actually going to start. Um, you know, doing their own form of quantitative easing because their economy is falling to shambles. So this is COVID. This is a weekly chart. We've got the last several weeks just total onslaught going down, 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 down. Uh, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven uh, red candles in a row. Had a big market bounce, a bear market rally right there. I think it's a bear market bounce and it is coming back down. This is the first candle only four days in this week. It's a shortened week. Volume is pathetic. Volume is pathetically low. People are blaming it on the fact that it's summer, uh, and summer volume typically is a little bit lower, but I don't think that's the case. I think that the market is about to drop. Uh, a lot of hedge funds have pulled money out, billions, hundreds of billions, and multi-trillion dollars has been removed from the market, not from the Fed, not from the Federal Reserve, but from uh, major market participants, mainly the hedge funds, the big money, the whales, the sharks. They are out there. They are pulling their money out because they know and are all saying unanimously something big is coming, and they would much rather preserve their capital. So like I said, last couple days, massive, massive monster bounces, but we've had these before. We've had these bounces, and then they fall, and then we've had the bounce, and then they fall, and then we had a bounce, and they fall. And so I think this is another bounce. This trend is not broken. This trend is not going to be broken, in my opinion, uh, because we have a lot of negative, um, negative stuff in the works. So um, and again, not trying to sound like an alarmist, not trying to sound like a doom and gloom, but um, you know, I definitely want to have a, a peace of mind knowing what I think is going to happen. Uh, really, my, my first and foremost, you know, advice to anybody and everybody watching this, you know, first share this if you find value of this content, um, and if you don't, let me know what I can do to improve because I do want to provide value to others. Um, that way, it's not just me, you know, rambling to my wife all the time. So. What is going on is that the market is about to take a whole bunch of money out of the, the system and nobody's really reacting accordingly. Yes, the market has dropped a good 20, 30%. I think we've got another 30 to 40% drop to come before people actually wake up and realize, uh-oh, this is not as good as the Fed keeps telling you as long as you know the, the economy is saying it's better than it is or the economy is saying it's not as good as it is. The, the PCI, PC, all the data that is, uh, is convoluted and you know altered from the powers that be are you know telling you that we have a much stronger economy than we really do. So, you know, first words of advice, avoid all major purchases, no houses, no cars, no condos, no boats, nothing major purchases, because likely in the next three to months, three to six months, you're going to find it cheaper. The market is going to drop, especially the housing market. People are using terms like softening. The market is softening, much like they used in 2007 that, that we're in a gully that we are dropping. And so um, the market is softening is absolutely sure. Um, but I think the market is going to melt away very, very quickly. So. What are we doing? The Federal Reserve, starting tomorrow, June 1st, 2022, um, is going to start vacuum sealing money out of the system or otherwise doing this quantitative tightening. Now, they've kind of began by slowly raising interest rates, and the market has dropped considerably you know, in doing that. But it's really, there's so much froth on the upside that uh, a lot of people are saying, well, now evaluations are better. Um, 
PE ratios and forward PE ratios are better, but they're still not good enough. They're still way too elevated. Um, and, and nobody wants to admit that because their portfolios have been better. Their housing has been better. If you're an owner of real estate already, you've likely done well, at least in even on unrealized gains with equity in your home. And nobody wants to say, you know what, I'm about to get more poor. Um, nobody wants to feel that way. That That's, you know, a, a negative emotion we don't want. But the Federal Reserve starting tomorrow is going to start taking money out of the system. The proposed maximum reduction will be $60 billion in treasuries and $35 billion in mortgage-backed securities. That is what is propping up the housing market. And so it's also the same thing that caused the, the mortgage-backed securities as well as the tranches and the, the poor CDOs is what caused the 2008 uh, housing collapse. Uh, I'm not suggesting that we are anywhere near that same environment. We're actually in a little bit wor or a great deal worse, but in a, an entirely different reason. It's not from giving bad loans. It's from printing money to oblivion. So I just read over the FOMC minutes, uh, which I normally don't do, but I read over the minutes and it says that we are going to start with 30 billion per month for the first three months and then increase to 60 billion per month after, depending on how the market handles it. We will also, instead of the 35 billion mortgage backed securities, we will cut that in half to 17.5 billion mortgage backed securities. Um, per month for the first three months, and then we will increase to $35 billion. Um, as an aside, during 2017 to 2019, when we tried to reduce a little bit of money off the balance sheet from the 2007 uh, Great Housing uh, Recession, uh, we were only able to get a peak rate of $50 billion. The goals right now are $60 billion, so I find that unlikely to be obtained uh, personally because, again, uh, during 2008 or from the 2007-2009 debacle and in 2017-18 from the 2007 to 2009 debacle, they were only able to reduce their balance sheet by around 20% before they had to change course reverse because the Dow dropped by 19% and they had to flip course and go back to quantitative easing, which, again, is why I think the market is bouncing because the market's saying, you know what, you're right, you I screwed up you overprinted you overstimulated but really what are you going to do you're going to be the guy who's going to be known for destroying the world economy nobody wants to be the next paul volcker even though somebody needs to do it nobody wants to step up and say you know what we've done this it's not me personally i was the one who caused it this is you know decades of of just endless money printing and the bill is coming due and so um so again they're going to slowly reduce balance sheet. So I, I looked up something and there's a couple things I want to kind of, um, you know, point out here. So number one, um, the first one is I wanted, you know, to, to kind of give an idea of what, so I'm sorry, just pulling up Weeble real quick. Um, just want to give an idea of how much, you know, 30 billion per month is going to be vacuumed out of the system. So $30 billion per month, Rivian's market cap is currently sitting at 28.3 billion. So Rivian gone one month. Um, the next month, um, let's see. Plug, plug is 10 billion. So three of those, three plugs gone. Coin, Coinbase, 17 billion. Two of those gone. Affirm, 8 billion. Like what, like four of them. SoFi, 6, six billion, gone. Neo, 28 billion, gone. Uh, Baidu, Baidu. Uh, 50 billion. Twitter, 30 billion dollar valuation. So 30 every every month, the government is going to take away a Twitter. So you know, for three months, it's going to go Twitter, 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 and then after that, after those three months, they're going to double Twitter. They're going to take away Twitter and in Lucid, Lucid Motor Group, which is also 30 billion dollar market cap. So gone. Uh, not to mention the mortgage backed securities, things like that. Um, so you know, just to give everyone an idea, a general idea of how much that money is they're taking out of the system. So I thought, okay. What is a comparison we can think of, you know, kind of comparing two things? But then I actually started to think, okay, well, how much did they print? So if they're if they're willing, and, and again, we're starting off slow, and, 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 you know, we have no problem printing to oblivion, but we're going to start off slow, and we're going to ease into it. How much money did they print? And one, most of the time, they don't want to mention during the minutes how much money they wanted to print. But what I have found so far is that they printed between 40 to $80 billion per month in printed money. So... Our peak removal is going to be 60, and that's a hope. We've never, ever obtained it. We've never achieved it. The highest we achieved was 50 billion, and that didn't come close. And we were printing over 80 billion per month. So we're going to, we're going to take away, you know, quarters 
of what we threw out. So in one month, we, we had no problem dumping massive, massive amounts of money into the system, but now we're gonna take away very, very large sums of money out of the system. So I think a lot of people need to think about that. I think you need to wrap your head around that that is a big amount of money that has never been done before. Anytime, the, the one thing that the, that the Federal Reserve has a spotless record on is causing recessions. Anytime they pull money out of the system, they cause a recession, hands down. And so as much as Nobody wants to think, and everybody's like living in this illusion that we're going to have a soft landing. I just don't see it. I don't see it happening. Here's what I do see. The Federal, the federal Reserve, as well as the federal government, the current administration, the previous administration, every administration before and thereafter, doesn't want to be known as the clowns who destroyed the economy, who lost the United States World Reserve currency. So what are they going to do? They are going to push the buck to the next guy and let it be their problem, or girl, let it be their problem, and they're also going to do whatever they can to tout themselves. So let's be fair to everybody and just acknowledge that, um, you know, regardless of your political standpoints, this is going to be a problem for everybody. Now, here's the one thing I definitely think is going to happen. Um, you know, right now we have a lot of economies that are failing. The Eurozone, not doing too hot. China, doing horrendous, um, despite the fact that they won't tell you that. Australia, not doing so hot. The United States, not doing so hot. Again, all of these are, are going to be, a, you know, a house of cards coming down. What I believe that is going to happen is that during this debacle, when all of this goes down, when everything gets worse, the United States is going to wait until other countries fail and fail hard before us. And then the United States will finally admit that we're in a very aggressive, egregious recession only after when they can point the finger at everyone else and say, this is it. They brought us down with the ship. Um, you know, they brought the ship down with this this rising tide. So all rising tides bring down ships. So, um, or, or however that goes. So, I, you know, I, not that I want to just, nobody wants to be known as the individual or the country or the economy that or destroying the economy. And uh, unfortunately, um, at this point, really, it goes to everybody. Another thing that is important, PCE, um, uh, personal consumption expenditures came out today. And let's see if we can pull this up. Um, so... Here we go. So basically, this is just my, my list of notes here. Um, and this was straight from the minutes right here. If things go according to plan, the Fed will have removed more than $522 billion from the financial system by 2022 and another $1.1 trillion by the end of 2023. So remember, they are planning on removing liquidity and removing money from the system for at least one more year. They also, uh, PCE came in, uh, the total PCE uh, inflation was 6.6% over the 12 months ending in March, the core PCE price inflation, which excludes energy and food was 5.2%. So it means it raised and, and a lot of people are kind of booming about that, which is why the market bounced a little bit today. But again, it consumer personal expenditure personal consumer expenditures uh, consumption uh, does not include the two things every person needs. We need energy to fuel um, your cooking, your driving, your, your robots, your machines, everything that we have as well as food. We all need food to eat. Um, and, you know, there, there's energy for the getting the food to the stores, getting it to us, getting for the farmers need, you know, energy. So it, it's really absurd that they're going to, you know, take these couple of them out of here. The other thing is, GDP is already down 1.5% for this year, and they are still professing that by the end of this year, we will be 1.5% positive, which means we need a minimum of a 3% gain in GDP. I find that to be incredibly unlikely. They are just softening the blow. Uh, borrowing costs are rising, making everything more affordable. People hear inflation, but they don't understand it yet. Now, this is a little personal note. Right now, uh, consumer price index, um, which I believe to be a lie, the CPI, um, you know, says that inflation is sitting around between 8.2, and uh, I'd say the real number is close to 12. They are not. They are, you know, fabricating these numbers. They are picking things that make the numbers look as best as possible, as robust as possible, to fit their narrative. And um, right now you go around town, you talk to your friends, you talk to your family, people who have no idea or don't, you know, pay attention to financial markets will be like, yeah, things are expensive. You know, my mom will complain, gas, gas is high, milk is so high for a carton of eggs or whatever, and eggs are about to get really high you know, because of the, the bird issue and the chicken issue. But the other thing is, is that right now, 
um, inflation's high. They're running this narrative that inflation's not actually as high as it is, which is, I think, a disservice to the entire world, yet alone the financial community. Again, they're supposed to be a fiduciary to us. But the other thing is, is that as inflation rises, um, people are still not adjusting their habits. Right now, people have made so much money in the past several months um, that and they've because of the cost of borrowing money because of money has been so cheap and easy to get they've been able to increase their lifestyle and nobody wants to decrease their lifestyle now and so the last thing i think is going to happen is um, now people are starting to get back into credit card debt a couple months ago a year ago we were actually reducing household uh, credit credit debt but now that it's about to turn because as people are finding things are more expensive they're not willing to reduce that lifestyle and so they're just putting things on credit thinking you know what eventually things are going to go back down and i'll be able to pay this off eventually however it is my belief that inflation is going to rise another three to four percent before the general person starts to say you know what and they're going to start acknowledging that inflation and say, you know what, I really feel that inflation, that thing's pretty high. Maybe we're going to start curbing some of our spending. As inflation rises another 8 to 10%, that is when I think the, you know, the economy is really going to negatively react to this and say, you know what, I'm not buying this. I can't afford it. Outside of food, outside of energy to get to and from work, um, you know, air conditioning uh, to run my you know, house in the Summertime, if you live in a, a extremely hot climate, although we have, um, you know, planned blackouts because of the energy issues already. So I see there being a massive supply demand issue. And, um, and I definitely see that uh, inflation is going to get much, much worse. Uh, again, what narrative are they going to give you? So those are my thoughts. If you have any questions, reach out, let me know. Thank you so much. I'll catch you all on the next one.